I don't even know how to pray. Well, I'll, I'll help you. And you know, my God, I have found through the years, he constantly draws us even deeper in him. And, and something came to my mind yeah, oh, earlier today, and I said, all fear just goes all over me. Fear. Oh, preacher, fear? Oh, yeah. Doing something that I've never done before. All of a sudden, fear will grip you. But then I say, well, why, sh why should I be afraid about it? God's going to open the door, and he's going to help me in everything that I don't understand that I have never gone through and did before. You know, uh, you may be seated. I, uh, when I was in high school, they asked me to do a speech. And I thought, oh, I can do a speech, and I, I, I never did a speech before. And when I got down there, they, they said, yeah, there's going to be like three or 400 people there. And fear really gripped me. I thought 12, 12 people put a lot of fear in me. And I sat up there and went, I couldn't hardly speak in front of anybody. But since then, I... I still had fear. And one time they asked me to stand up in a, in a crowd of a thousand kids. And God just let the anointing flow. I didn't know what to say, but I did say this. In Acts chapter 8, uh, ver chapter 1, verse 8 said, He will receive power after the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And that anointing fell through there and touched them young people, that the anointing will move upon you and me and all when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. So then fear don't have no control over that. It's the power of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. So thankful for all the men and all those that have been helping uh, with the tree. I know some of you have wanted to, but uh, uh, just circumstances that uh, they, they're they whittling on it slowly. Uh, we're all broken down pieces of uh, bodies. <laughs> our, our bodies can't do what we used to do, so we'll just take a few days to do it. So I uh, appreciate everybody doing that and working. A lot of things are happening. Uh, uh, a lot of people, you be in prayer that God will open the drawers and keep drawing people. Uh, I, I, still, I feel the anointing when I say that. So when you are praying, say, God, open their eyes of the blind and draw them to more truth. Every church that I go to work in, the Presbyterian, uh, the Methodist, the Assembly of God, uh, independent churches, I, I walk through their buildings and I pray. I lay hands on their buildings. I say, as I'm walking over their platform, I say, God, let truth come upon this. Uh, let there be an opening of truth. Uh, let the, the spirit of truth fall upon these people. Let the minister get a revelation of truth. And I, and I walk through them. And I, I, I mean, I literally have keys to other churches in this city that I go work on their air conditioners. <laughs> I open up their air, and the platform is, their, the thermostat's on the platform. So I walk up on their platform saying, God, open their eyes that they can see. So you pray that, and God is going to do a wonderful, mighty work. I'm going to share one thing that Brother John shared to me at the beginning of service. There was a man, Brother John has shared the oneness wheel uh, uh, on Facebook. A person from Cairo, Egypt said, I don't believe there's one God. Brother John just texted him back and said, have you read the scriptures? The guy texts back and said, 
I have read the Bible many times and never have seen them scriptures like that. I believe there's one God. The word of God is settled. The word of God is true. There is only one God. There's only one faith. There's only one Father. There's only one Spirit. And there's one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father of all, through all, and in you all. The Holy Ghost is the God Almighty that's in you. So God is pouring out the revelation on all flesh. They got to know who Jesus is to be a believer. Just confessing that Jesus is Lord, but you got to believe Jesus is Lord. Hallelujah. Brother Mitchell, will you come uh, before I get preaching? <laughs> I appreciate Brother Mitchell being with us. Give him a great, great welcome. Hallelujah. Appreciate you so much. Good to have been in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. And I just love what I feel here, don't you? Yeah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I've been watching uh, on live stream your services. And so I'll sit there in my recliner just, come on, preach it. Come on, let's go. <laughs> one Lord. I like to hear it. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, above all, through all, and in you all. Yeah. Amen. Wow. So, so good to be here tonight. I appreciate the opportunity to come and uh, be with you fine folks. Amen. I said, you need to come with me. She said, she said well, I'm tired. I, she is. She, she is wore out. We've been doing some remodeling, and, and uh, she works, and, and uh, her, she, she, she is wore out. And I said, these are some beautiful people up there. I said, you need to go visit them. Come with me sometime. <laughs> so they are, you are beautiful people. I appreciate your pastor. Amen. Appreciate what I feel here. Amen. There's, uh, not everywhere you can go where you can feel the presence of God. Amen. He was talking a while ago about different churches, and and, uh, and I really didn't want to get ahead of myself, but he just kept on talking about these different churches, and so uh, it just kept on coming to my mind. But several years ago, I guess it's probably been about, oh, probably about 10, maybe 12 years ago, I was asked to go preach at a Baptist church, and... <laughs> That was different now. That was, I mean, uh, I don't know. But uh, we got to preaching, and the Lord got to moving. And, and uh, every so I'll see someone just kind of raise their hand, you know, kind of look around, and they'd, <laughs> you know, put it back down. They, they were feeling something. Hey Amen. About the third, actually, I preached uh, four nights for them. And about the third night, uh elderly couple come to the altar. And... Uh, they both had their hands raised and tears coming down their face. And some of them didn't know what was going on. Amen. But I, some of them felt something. They didn't know what they were feeling. <laughs> Hallelujah. And uh, such beautiful people. And, and uh, she raised her, raised her hands. I put my hand upon their heads together and I began to pray for them. And I, I said a simple word. Just, I said something like, overflow these vessels with the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, he began to speak in tongues as the Spirit of God gave the utterance. I looked over at her, tears began to go down her face. I began to watch her speak in tongues, began to listen to her speak in tongues. Hallelujah, the church didn't know what was going on. Hallelujah, most of them didn't, but uh, uh, God moved after service was over. They both came to me and they said, Preacher, it's been years, several years since we felt what we felt today. Tonight, she said, I was raised in an apostolic church. She said, it's been several, several years that I felt what I felt tonight and experienced what I experienced tonight. It's been several, several years. And what she was feeling, what she was uh, experiencing was something, a man, that she had received as a child that she was raised in. What she was feeling, if you please, 
would be simply, if I could put it in this phrase, she was hearing a sound. She was hearing a sound from the past. Something, hallelujah, happened and began to bring back to remembrance uh, in that sound uh, that she was hearing, uh, the sound of the uh, Holy Ghost, uh, the sound, amen, uh, of hearing herself speaking in tongues. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, I just feel something tonight, church. I feel it. Can we just raise our hands in this place? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 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 Come on, church. Let's just feel after the Lord just for a few moments. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I believe that God wants to do something tonight. God desires a man to talk to someone tonight. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That's it, church. Let's just magnify him for a few moments. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. First Kings chapter 19. And I'm going to get back to this here in just a few moments, but I just like to just read this real quick. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and with all how he had slain all the prophets with a sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger unto Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of, the wo- of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that he arose and went for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servants there, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a Jupiter tree and requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than any of my fathers. And as they lay and slept under a Jupiter tree, behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baked on the coals and a cruise of water of his head at his head, and he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. In verse 8, And he arose and did eat and drink and went into the drink that meat for forty days and forty nights unto Horeb, the mount of God, and he came thither unto a cave, and lodged there. Behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, and he said unto him, listen to this word, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken the covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain the prophets with the sword. And I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go forth and stand up on the mount before the Lord. And he behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Pastor, will you pray? Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. 
Jesus, have your way, Lord, tonight, God. Lord, anoint these lips of clay, God. Lord, anoint the ears to hear and the hearts to receive. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, you may be seated. Thank you for standing to the reading word of God. Amen. Pastor was talking about uh, he knows where you are and, and he calls for you. Amen. They sang about it a little bit while ago. Hallelujah. I mentioned while ago about earlier about this young this elderly couple. And sh- I can remember the, the day, the night, the last service. The lady came to me and she said, Preacher, one of these days, I'm going to get back where I used to be. One of these days, I'm going to go back to an apostolic church. And I'm going to be in the service, amen, where I can raise my hands and I can worship God the way I feel like I need to be worshiping God. She said, but at this time, uh, I, I just can't do it right now. Even though she was filled with the Holy Ghost, this I believe it was the night before, and her husband received the Holy Ghost the night before. She said, one of these days I'm going to get back to where I need to be. I don't know exactly what was holding her back, amen, but something happened just in that little Baptist church, (laughs) amen. She began to hear a sound, a familiar sound. Tonight, I want to preach to you just for a few moments on a familiar sound in a strange land. A familiar sound in a strange land. We read about Elijah. I mean, she, as he began to, to, to flee, he began to, to hide, began to run away from Jezebel that was wanting to take his life. Amen. As he began to, to, to go his way, amen. He finally he found himself in a cave. And a voice spoke out and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? What he was saying is simply this, What are you doing here? What are you doing here? All these things that, that I've done for you, and you're hiding from Jezebel? You're hiding in a cave? Amen. He began to hear that sound. What doest thou, Elijah, a familiar sound? The word of God said there's a great and strong wind. I don't know if it may have been a tornado or, or what it may have been, but it was a strong wind that rent the mountain. That had to be some powerful wind. And break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, a earthquake. Things began to shake all around him. Earthquake was taking place. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. Amen. It's something when God whispers your name. It's the whisper. He don't have to shout it. He don't have to scream it. But he knows who you are. He knows exactly, amen, where you're at. He knows your address. Amen. He knows where you live. Amen. He knows exactly what you're feeling. He knows what you're going through. Amen. But when God begins to whisper, everything is going to be all right. I've got everything under control. Amen. You don't have to worry. Amen. There's a still, small voice that cries out, I'm right here. 
I have not left you. I have not forsaken you. I am a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. I'm not going to leave you. A still, small voice. Sometimes, amen, God don't move. I mean, uh, what you're needing from God, sometimes it's not in a, in a, in a shouting service. Sometimes it's not in a running service or, amen, a, a big old glory holiday breakdown. Sometimes you may be sitting on your pew, amen, you're looking around and you're seeing different ones get a blessing. But you yourself are sitting there. I've been there, so I know what I'm talking about. You're sitting there and you're watching people get a blessing. Amen. And you're longing to hear a sound. Uh, you're longing to feel the presence of God. Uh, amen. Once you like you once felt before. Uh, I believe that Job said that all that I was uh, and months passed. Uh, you're wanting to feel something, amen, that you that you're longing for. It seemed like your prayer is going to the ceiling, and that's as far as it's going. Uh, it may seem like your prayers are bounce, bouncing from one side of the wall to the next. Uh, amen. You're one God, where are you at? Uh, amen. But all of a sudden, uh, hallelujah, if you begin to raise your hand, uh, it may be only by half mass, uh, but if you can just raise your hand uh, just a little bit, uh, God is saying, hey, uh, I'm right here. Amen. There's something that you need to feel, something that you need to hear. God is right here. A still, small voice, a familiar sound in a strange land. I don't know about you tonight, friend, but uh, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blues. The song said the angels beckoned me to heaven's open door. Why? Because I just can't feel at home uh, in this world anymore. Uh, oh, this world seems like it's so strange. Uh, sometimes this, wor this world is getting stranger and stranger. Every, every day uh, seems like something new is happening. Uh, something new is taking place. Uh, amen. We're in a strange land. Uh, amen. If, if there's ever been a time uh, that we need to hear the voice of God. Uh, hallelujah. I believe we are living that day. Uh, we are living in an hour. How can I hear the voice of God. Amen. When you're reading the word of God, that is his word. Amen. When the man of God is preaching, when your pastor is preaching, that is God. That is God speaking through him. That is a familiar sound uh, in a strange land. We are living in a strange land. Uh, friend, tonight things are getting stranger and stranger and stranger. But one of these days, uh, he's going to say, come on, bride. Uh, let's go home. Uh, come on, church. Uh, it's, my God, it's time to get out of here. Uh, why? Because I'm living in a strange land, uh, and I need to hear uh, the sound, uh, a familiar, a familiar sound uh, in a strange land. Uh, amen. Uh, what, what has happened uh, to the times of revival when the preacher didn't have to preach? Uh, he couldn't preach uh, because the Holy Ghost uh, was preaching. Uh, the Holy Ghost uh, was moving all through the house. Uh, people were my God, uh, we're slain in the spirit. Uh, people are falling, uh, amen, uh, to their face to the floor. Uh, say, Brother Mitchell, we want revival, uh, but how bad uh, do we want revival? How bad uh, do we want to hear uh, that strange, uh, that sound uh, in a strange land? My God. I don't know how I'm going to get this message, complete this message tonight, but I believe tonight so that somebody needs to hear a familiar sound. I've got to hear that sound, that familiar sound. Hallelujah. I just found out a while ago, just a few hours, a couple hours ago, maybe an hour and a half ago, I, did, I had no idea, but my brother-in-law, my stepbrother-in-law received the Holy Ghost right here, right in this little place right here. 
I had no idea. And this young man can preach. He can sing. He can play the guitar. He is very talented. Amen. Pastor knows who I'm talking about. Amen. Very talented young man. If there's ever been a time for him to hear a familiar sound. If there's if there's ever been a time, I'm not talking about it against him, but if there's ever been a time that he needs to hear a familiar sound, amen, he needs to hear it now before it's too late. Hallelujah. I think about a backslider that sits in our pews, in our apostolic pews, amen, Someone that received the gift of the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking in tongues. Someone, amen, that's been baptized in that wonderful name. Somebody, amen, that comes to come to the house of God, that raised their hands at one time. Somebody, amen, that prayed and worshiped God. Somebody, amen, that spoke in that heavenly language. Amen, but something has happened. Amen. Uh, they just not they just every once in a while uh, they come and they visit. Uh, oh, but church, has there never been a time uh, when they're to come to, to the house of God uh, and begin to feel, uh, begin to hear that familiar sound? Uh, I believe that we're living in that hour. We are living in that day. Uh, amen. For the backslider, amen, to hear uh, that familiar sound. Uh, they are in a strange land. Uh, things are not like they used to be. Uh, things are unfamiliar than what they was in times past. Uh, things are different now. Oh, but if they need to hear a sound, uh, a familiar sound, uh, this is where they need to hear it. Uh, they need to hear uh, the Word of God. They need to have somebody say, hey, God loves you. Amen. We at the church of a living God, I feel like sometimes, amen, Christians are the most cruelest people there are. So, Brother Mitch, that's mean. Well, how many times, amen, do we... Something we talk about somebody and we beat them down while they're laid down. Instead, say, Come on, give me your hand. Come on, you can do it. You can make it. Amen. God loves you. The church loves you. The pastor loves you. The saints love you. It's time to come back home. Amen. It's time that you hear that familiar sound in their strange land. <coughs> and don't kick them while they're down. Hallelujah. Pastor Wallace goes spoke a little bit about, about Moses. I thought maybe he read my notes. I don't know. But he spoke a little bit about Moses, not able to speak very well. The Word of God said that he took his father's sheep to where? The backside of the desert. The backside of the desert. When I think of the desert, or the backside of the desert, in my mind, I think of tumbleweeds. I think of a dry and thirsty land. I, th I think of cactuses. Amen. I, th I think of desolation. I don't ever think about hey, maybe a burning bush that's not being consumed. Or do I think of hearing a voice from that bush? Amen. In Exodus chapter 3, verse 4 and 5, says, And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy, thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. What happens on the backside of the desert? Hallelujah. When you're on the backside of the desert, when you're in that dry season, you're not always going to be up here. I found that at a young age. You're not always going to be on top. You're going to go through some valleys. You're going to go through some trials. You're going to have some tests. You're going to have some, you're going to have some hurt. And if, if someone says, once you come to church, all these things will go away. No, they won't go away, but God will give you the strength. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is your comforter. 
it'll comfort you. Amen. But what happens on the back side of the desert when you're in that dry place? That's when you can hear the voice of God. When you're all alone on the back side of the desert in your trial in a strange land. Amen. God wants to speak to you. Hallelujah. I don't know whether you're here tonight under the sound of my voice if you're sitting in this amen, in these chairs. Or if you're out there listening. Amen on live stream. I strongly feel tonight that somebody needs to hear this familiar sound. Hallelujah. You're hearing it right now. What you what you're feeling right now is the presence of God. What you're feeling this very moment, if I could say, is the sound. Amen. A familiar sound in a strange land. The Word of God said, I'm not going to tell the whole story because we know the story about Samson. But in the latter part, after his hair was cut off, after his eyes were taken, plucked out from him. Amen. And he began to work. Amen. In the mill. And they began to make fun, began to make sport of him. The word of God said, as she, as she said to the Philistine, be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out at as other times before and shake myself and with he wist not that the Lord was departed from him. But the Philistines took him and put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass, and he did grind in the prison house. Howbeit, the hair of his head began to grow again after it was shaven. Something began to happen. His hair began to grow back. Amen. If I could use that for illustration tonight, I believe that was a, a type of sound. Amen. He was in a strange land. Amen. The Word of God said that he beckoned to a, a young lad to help him get to the pillars of the building. And the Philistines were all in the house. The people, the Philistines were on top of the house. The young boy began to take him to the pillars of the building. The Bible said that he bowed himself. He brought the house down. Amen. The Bible said he killed more Philistines that day than he ever had his whole life. But before he did that, he said, Lord, avenge me one more time. God, let me hear your voice one more time. Hallelujah. Let me hear a familiar sound in a strange land. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. In closing tonight, I want to read to you a very familiar scripture that we should be able to quote, but I want to read it to you. I can quote it, but I want to read it to you. Acts chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it set out up on each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance.
When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were one accord, one place, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Can we stand tonight? And suddenly there came a sound from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are living tonight in a time when the church, hallelujah, hallelujah, he said, go into Jerusalem and tarry there until you be endued with power from on high. He said, Ye shall receive power. Acts 1 and 8, we've done quoted a while ago. Ye shall be receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And ye shall be witness unto me from Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. Understand tonight that we're living in that time. that we need to hear a sound. Samson called to the Lord and said, O Lord, God, remember me, I pray. Thee, and strengthen me, I pray. Thee, only this once, one more time, God, that I may be at once avenged of of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood and on which it was borne up of the one with the, his right hand and the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with these Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the Lord and upon all the people that were therein. So that dead which he slew at that at his death were more than what he slew his whole life. His strength did not reside in his long hair. His unshorn locks were the external evidence. They were the external evidence of his relationship to God. A public profession that he was acting as a servant of the Lord. His marvelous strength fell when God left him and returned when God granted his prayer. Hallelujah. What's going on? What's happening, preacher? Can we close our eyes just one more, just for a few moments? Can we raise our hand just for a few moments? You may be sitting here tonight, you're thinking, Preacher, what's going on? What's happening? What's taking place? What am I feeling? You're hearing a sound. It's a familiar sound. Tonight, if you're in a strange land, hallelujah, I'm going to give you an invitation. We can't just gather around the front. Hallelujah. I don't know. This is my second time here. My second time preaching.